always make sure this slate is pulled tight so that this gap you don't have a gap in there. You want it to be as tight as you can. So before you tighten this one, you just pull that in snug. Now notice we didn't do anything to adjust any of the seams yet. We just simply secured every screw down. You must do that before you do any leveling because when you do tighten these screws down, you will alter the position of the final place that the slate will rest. So we want to secure everything down. Then we'll go back to the slate and make our adjustments by loosening those screws inserting our wedging and then tightening it back down and it'll be perfect. As we stated before, there are several different methods of leveling slate, several different types of tools that can be used. A lot of installers like to use a hardened tempered piece of straight edge steel because really what you're trying to do is just achieve a perfect flatness for this surface of the slate and so a straight edge is one very very good method. Uh, another method is using several types of levels. You can use expensive sterret levels as mentioned before or what I like to use is just a, a carpenter's level uh, which is something that can be picked up at any any higher nicer hardware store and uh, I'm going to demonstrate using this method because again this is something that is just a pretty common tool that can be found. When you're leveling the slate you're starting out by, uh, by trying to find out what areas that we're going to use these wood wedges we're going to insert them between the backing of the slate and the leveling brace. By using these wedges, we're going to alter the height of this slate in various places in order to make it perfectly flat. So we're going to do that first by checking our, our slate in each piece. So we're measuring one piece measured off of another. So this level must go over, over the, uh, the seam of the slate. We can see here that this section is slightly lower than this. So we have a little bit of a high section there on the end. Our middle piece of slate is perfect and this end here indicates that the middle is low which is very common so that means we're going to just raise our seams up just a little bit. Begin by loosening those two screws, take two wedges, What you want to do is you want to pick up the middle piece of slate because you're trying to, trying to flush this middle piece to the end. So we're going to place the level on the end piece of slate going across to the middle and pick up the middle. Now we know that we have perfect leveling from this piece to this piece. Once we've picked that up, tighten our screw, double check. It came down just a little bit so we're going to just pick it up a little bit more. Perfect. Now bring up the end piece of slate so that it's level with it. While I'm doing this, I'm feeling for how flush this is. I want to go slightly high. So that I can make that perfect. Once the table has been leveled with the shims going around the perimeter of the slate, a critical step before uh, doing any putty process or anything to the table is placing wedges underneath the table between the backing and the cross members in various places like so, only these would be underneath, to, in order to prevent any slate from bowing if there's any weight or anything applied. When people are shooting on the table or putting any weight on it, you need that to be supported. So I'm going to crawl underneath and I'm going to insert these where needed according to where the, the slate seams tell us. I'm going to insert those shims where needed and then I'm going to finish by placing a staple into it so that it won't fall out. Great. Place this staple right here. Next, pro next procedure for this is we're going to complete the seams of the table. There's a couple different methods that are used. One is using uh, waxing, a torch and wax and waxing the seams. And the other one is mixing a putty and spreading the putty on the seams. We prefer the putty method used on our tables and the reason we do is because the waxing method will only flush the seam. It has no filling property at all and because this slate is as close to perfect as, as, as it can be, there are still imperfections that the putty will do a slight amount of filling and just achieve a better surface. For that reason, we prefer the putty and not the wax. When mixing the putty on the table, again, I, I just like to pour out the putty and mix it right on the table. It dries very quick. You don't need very much. I just like to pour out a little bit right on the table. Tr 
trowel it a little bit, create myself a little pocket, and just apply a little bit of water. You don't need to apply the putty all the way to the end of the slate because the rail is going to be setting in this area here. So you only need to go about to where the slate screws are. You just simply kind of apply it generously. Use more as needed. Once it's applied, then I'll do a final scrape. Once the putty's had time to dry, then we just simply take some sandpaper or a sanding block and lightly go over the whole seam. Don't forget the area that you also mix the putty. Just make sure that that's gone over as well. Take this opportunity to also inspect the slate very closely. Look for any rises, bumps, imperfections, any stuck glue or anything like that, and this is the time to correct that. Just got done washing my hands. Now uh, Chris and I are going to uh, lay the cloth out on the table and, and uh, start covering this table with the bed cloth. Chris, if you'll take this in. We're going to carefully lay it out over the table. Cloth is generally folded with the top side on the inside. So being aware of that, you want to keep that as clean as you can. We're going to try to slowly from this side, we're just going to wave the cloth across and down on the floor and shake slowly. That's just to get more dust off the table. You want to make sure that you have it as dust free as possible. Then when you lay the cloth on here, you just simply center it. Pull your way a little bit. I want to pull it so that the bottom of the cloth is flush with the bottom of the slate on this end. Side to side, it can be equal on both sides. You start at the end of the table. As I said, the cloth will be flush to the bottom of this slate. And you just start, you place a couple staples in the backing. Stretch gently to one side. Place staples about every six inches apart. Centering the cloth coming to the other end, that side is already secured. Now we're going to come to the center of the cloth and we're going to pull fairly firm. We're going to pull pretty hard. Hold that cloth down and place a couple staples in the center. Once those are down, that cloth will stay. Then we're going to come to one side and we can see we've got a lot of stretch on this cloth. We're going to come to one side and we're going to pull the same way, trying to take out all the slack that we can, but we're going to let up just a little bit. The reason we need to do that is because when we complete that side pocket, we need a little bit of slack in order to let that cloth lay in there correctly. Starting with the pocket, what you do is you, again, you'll be stapling directly into this side of the slate right here, or side of the backing. You pull a little bit of slack toward the pocket, place two staples. On the other side of the pocket, do the same thing and place two staples and give yourself a little bit of slack. Once you're done with that, you simply take and you stretch the cloth. Now I'm using the staple head and I'm stretching the cloth so that it lays smoothly, stretching it down to the bottom of that pocket and placing a staple deep into that pocket. Once that's complete, I use my knife. Right below the staple, I'm putting a split in that cloth, but below the staple so that if the cloth happens to tear, it will tear to that staple and stop. Once that split is done, I complete and, and lay another staple in the face of the pocket on one side and complete one on the other. Add two more splits underneath the staple. Continue to place staples underneath, pulling the tabs around so that the face of the, of the pocket is tight. Using your fingers again, pulling. Keep placing staples into those tabs. Pull this tab to the side and place here this one here, place like so. Because we're using a hand stapler, you're going to need to use a little tack hammer and just make sure those staples are in place. Then take a very sharp knife, trim the excess cloth. Trim those tabs. The staples that are in the front are simply there to hold that cloth in place. So you can go ahead then and pull these right out. If you have wrinkles in the top of your cloth on this first pocket, don't worry about that. When we go to that side, these are going to come out real easily. Now we can work around the rest of the table and complete the stretch and then finish with the corner pockets. 
It doesn't matter where you start, just as long as you get the proper stretch. You want to do much the same thing. You're pulling as much slack as you can, leaving yourself enough slack to complete the pocket. Come in here, I'm pulling slightly, placing staples about every six inches. Once all the cloth is stretched all the way around, then we just complete the corner pockets the same way we did the side. Pull these down, place a staple, do a split, two more holder staples on each side, two more splits, pull the tabs underneath and staple. At this point, you can trim all the way across the, the end, edge of the table, trim all the way to that side pocket. You want to make sure that the cloth is trimmed right on the bottom of the slate so that when the rail and the blind are attached, they cover all that. All right, after the cloth is all stretched, everything is stapled down, all the pockets are complete. The final thing we need to do before the rails are bolted down is cut out our rail bolt holes. When I say cut out, that's exactly what it means. You make sure that the cloth, when you, when you find the hole, which is you can feel underneath the slate and you can feel where the, rail bolt, where the rail bolt will come through, you must cut that cloth completely out. Please do not just do a split. When the bolt is, is, is uh, inserted up through the slate and into the rail, if there's any cloth in there, it could cause a, a cross thread to that bolt and cause damage to the rail. First thing you want to do to prepare for covering the rails is lay out a protective mat on whatever table or surface you're using. One thing we want to cover from Legacy, the feather strips that we use are a tapered strip and we do this by design so that when the cloth is applied into the feather strip and, and, and secured with this, the taper secures it and holds it in place and allows it to be the correct height for the cloth when we're finished. So I'm going to demonstrate applying the feather strip into the rail now. You take the bottom of the cloth, the side that will be down, and you place it facing up on top of the rail, overlapping the groove for the feather strip like so. 